these are my new Indian clubs. Uh, a 19th century exercise aid. Uh, every uh, YMCA, YWCA would have had dozens of examples and sets of matched weight Indian clubs that people used to exercise with. They even used to do synchronized swinging and have competitions doing so. Um, I've made two individual sets prior to this. Uh, again, based on the traditional shape of a uh, piece of wood turned on a lathe that, with a heavier bottom and coming up to a hand grip part. And I decided I wanted to do these a little differently, whereas all, almost all the other ones are, uh, are uh, tubular because they're turned on a lathe on, and so they're cut on an axis. These I decided to only have part of it turned and have uh, left the bottom section square. For, uh, between the different Y's and uh, health clubs, athletic clubs, they even had competitions of synchronized uh, swinging of Indian clubs. And they would work out these routines and, and all the women would be dressed in the same long sleeve and long uh, skirted costumes and they would do these synchronized exercises and compete with each other. So anyway, it was a very common thing as, uh, as an exercise aid, I guess you'd say, as opposed to, you know, they weigh something, but they're not weights in the sense of free weights as we use now. So anyway, the predominance of those were, of the early ones, were made by turning them on a lathe. You take a piece of solid wood, put it in a wood lathe, and then use very sharp chisels to turn that shape. And of course, they were all different sizes, uh, for people of different physical abilities to lift. The heavier ones, obviously, the person had to have more uh, upper body strength to lift those. So prior to these, I've made two other uh, sets of Indian clubs. One was a rather large set made of maple that were about this tall. And then the other set were about this tall and they were made of uh, curly maple and black walnut. And they were both made in the traditional way. I turned them on a lathe. So I hadn't really thought to make any more Indian clubs because I already had two sets. But uh, I went to see this extraordinary show of Chinese artifacts, bronze artifacts at the Virginia Museum. And uh, several of the things that really intrigued me were these bronze bells that were part of the exhibition. And some of them were, uh, some of them, of course, were round as, as a traditional handbell shape, but some were rectangular and some were square. And they nearly all of them had uh, uh, designs and uh, Chinese characters cast in them. Extraordinary things. So I had the notion that wouldn't it be fun to make a set of Indian clubs that were more squarish than roundish? So I came home and thought about it. And so what I've made here is a composite. These are, the, the center of these have been turned on a lathe exactly like the originals uh, and my previous ones had, so that it's a nice thing to grip. And I, after I turned this section from the top here to here, I left the bottom section square. And then uh, on the table saw and the, band saw and the band saw and the sander, I was able to smooth those surfaces so that I could laminate these pieces of curly maple on. Curly maple is a wonderful wood. People around the world have used this in furniture and decorative items. And the reason it's so neat is it's said to have chatoyance, that when you move it in the light, it gets this nice little wrinkle, mountains and valleys kind of feeling about it. And there was just something very appealing about that. And I've realized over the years that by dyeing it different colors, that's to say colors that aren't necessarily wood colors, it emphasizes the chatoyance. So having seen the bronze bells, which had kind of a greenish patina, I thought, well, that's what I can do. I can laminate these pieces of curly maple on here, and then I can dye them green, and that will at least have a sense of what the original bronze bells were like. But still, you know, something that would be unique to my creation. <clears throat> so that's what I did. The section was turned. This is actually black walnut. And once the, these pieces were glued on and, and, and this shape established, this sort of truncated taper shape, then I bleached the whole upper section because I wanted there to be a nice contrast between the upper section, the grip, and the lower section. 
And also, I wanted to have an area that, if necessary, I could add some weight to these so that they would be effective for swinging uh, to better exercise with. So, once I determined I needed weight, I drilled a hole in the bottom of them and I put several ounces of lead shot inside. And then I had this separate piece of uh, wood glued onto the bottom. It's, it's quite dramatically beveled because I wanted the pieces to kind of hover above the uh, table surface that they were sitting on. And lastly, I wanted, initially, they just sat straight up. They were perfectly parallel. That is to say, they, they were square to the surface that they sat on. And that just seemed a little less interesting to me. So I cut the bottoms so that they would have a slight rake to them so that it would kind of energize them as they were sitting on surface. And then for the crowning touch, I have a piece of uh, ruby glass in the top of each one of them. And the ruby glass is, uh, is, set with, uh, is set on top of foil, so it looks very deep and very mysterious down in there, as though there was an engine or something, maybe its own volcano inside. So, Michael's new Indian gloves. <laughs>